Hi everyone, we are back at the machine now and we're going to stitch out our spider web. This is the center of our design and the pin's there. I covered it with a pin more to carry it so that I wouldn't scratch myself and also so the pin doesn't fall out. I don't know if you've ever done that where you've been at a table with your pin and then you carried it across the room and the pin fell out and you stepped on it. That's not fun. So that's why I keep that covered. And I'm going to leave the blue tape on. It just makes it easy for me to find the pin. In the beginning of the design, we're going to switch templates off. So it will be helpful to me to do that. This is our spider. And remember, the lines with the dots are the ones where we want to actually stitch the spokes. And underneath the spider is our starting point. So I'm just going to pin him out of the way here, right there. I'm going to get him out of the way so that we can stitch and not have to worry about him. I don't want the pin sticking out in the bottom. There we go. So I'm going to start about here, and I'm going to stitch this line, and I'm going to stop when I get to here. So this is the line that we marked with the stitching line disc. Now my hand was in the way. Sorry about that. The stitching disc line and that's where the foot should end so it just kind of gives you a guesstimate of where you need to be for that first one so obviously I could take my spacing gauge and use my quarter inch marking on my spacing gauge to get my line and then that would give me a nice straight line because I want to actually stitch on this or I'm going to put this away and I'm going to use the spinning wave. This is perfect for what I want to do. So the spinning wave has a hole in it right there and I'm going to put that on top of my pen. Now I can line this up and I'm going to stitch on this line all the way down to where I need to go. So I know I need to start there and Look, that was not a perfect place to put that mark, but in this area is where I want to start because it will be underneath the spider. And if I have to move the spider when I'm done, that's okay. So I'm going to pull up my thread. Isn't it always the, the deal that it's not going to pull up when you're trying to film? Let's try that again. It helps if you actually hold the thread. There we go. So now I'm going to use my spacing gauge again just to make sure I'm lined up. There we go. sure that's tight pull that and I'm gonna stitch to the center And when I get to my green line, I'm going to stop. Now I'm going to take this off. And I'm going to put the spin echo. And I'm going to put it on the very first hole. So. And I'm going to turn this so you can see and I can see the hole. Now. Let's spin this around so you can see what we're doing. This line here is the one that's opposite of this one. And we want to line up these holes. And there's also a line on this template. We want to line up the holes with this line. That's where we're going to stitch. 
So now I'm going to skip this one and I am going to stitch to this next reference line. I'm going to take this off. I'm going to put my spinning wave back on. And now I'm going to stitch. I went a little too far. I'm just going to check with my spacing gauge. If it's not exactly perfect on this line, it's going to be okay. Remember here's the line that I marked, the little tick mark with the outer rim tool? That's where I want to stop. And then without moving the template, I'm just going to stitch back to center again. So all of the spokes are going to be double stitched. And that allows us to be able to stitch the entire design without stopping. Now I'm going to put this back on the same hole as before. I'm going to rotate the template. This time this opposite is where I want this dots to be. So. If I pull this off a little so you can see what I'm talking about. This line here runs right through the dots or the little pinholes. So I'm actually using the pinholes because they're easier to see on light fabric than the line is. So I want to be opposite of this one. There we go and then simply stitch past that first line and go to the next one. We're going to take that off. We're going to put this on. We're going to put our template. We're going to just turn our template until it hits the foot. And it has all these reference lines in the middle there. And they're all lined up with the reference lines I've stitched. So I know I'm in the right position. I'm going to stitch my spoke. And if this moves on you, it's okay. Which obviously I had a problem, but no one's ever going to know this when you're done. I went out to my little tick mark. And I'm coming back. Gonna put my template down. I'm gonna rotate it so I'm opposite of this line here, which is the one in between. I just drop my spacing gauge and then I'm going to stitch over to this second line. So skip one and stop. Put this down. I can see my lines. And I'm going to stitch out. for my little green tick out. It's way at the top. If you don't have the outer rim tool or a ruler, you could also measure this and put a little line on your template as to where you want it to stop. got a little 
crazy there and moved a little bit. And I am sorry that my shoulder got in the way. Remember with the templates, you don't really want to rotate your fabric. You want to rotate the template. So now I need to be the one that's opposite that, which is this one right here. The lines. And again, this first round is the one that takes a lot of time. After that, they go really quickly. That's going to get in my way. This one went way off the line. Well, you know, I always tell my students you can fix anything. So, and you can. If you notice right here, I'm not touching the template here. There's a little space. What I'm doing is I am stitching back to where I started. This is the only one that's a little messed up. Put the template on the hole. This is the one. That's the opposite one. Once you get this down, you can switch these out pretty quickly. almost to the part where it starts to go fast. We've got a couple of more spokes to do. And then we'll be done. It's a little bit more difficult to see over here now. If you miss those green lines, it's okay. A couple of stitches over, a couple of stitches short, it's gonna be absolutely fine. We only have one more spoke to go. to turn this because I'm having a hard time seeing. Okay, so now I have to line this up and normally I would just stick my head over there but then it'll go in front of the camera. And this will be our last spoke. And now you know why I have the tape on, because I have sometimes a really hard time seeing.
and this is the last one so when I stitch I'm going to stop here and I'm stopped on the spoke so now what we want to do is we want to move up this line all of these spokes are done double stitched this is the one that's single stitched so every time we change sizes we're going to travel along here and there's a couple of ways that you can do that I'm going to retrieve my spacing gauge and show you one way you can put your foot down your, your template your 12 inch arc use your spacing gauge and travel up a little bit and now we're gonna see if that's enough room yeah. remember we want to turn this and we were using this as our center reference and I'm not quite far enough so I can come back here use my spacing gauge or I can just free travel up a little bit I'm fairly confident doing that myself there we go so now on this one which is the second hole we're going to stitch from spoke to spoke. I hit the spoke. I'm going to turn my template. So now this is easy because my line is between every other spoke. So it was just the first time that it took such a long time. turn, line up the template, stitch to the next spoke. there there's also a line right here on the template right next to my pink tape and I'm making sure that that line is on this one so when I'm on this side it's easy to see and that's where we started so now we're going to move up this line a little bit. Again, use your template if you're not comfortable doing this. I need to move all the way that way, so I have to come up a little bit farther. stitch
this part goes super fast. Now, when I turn this, you see my line is not exactly on top. It's a little bit to this side over here. So I'm going to show you a secret. You don't want to turn it so much that it's like twisting and it's moving the pin. You want it to sit there. So we're going to stitch until we get to the middle here. And now we can move the template. We're back to where we need to be. So there's going to be a time where you're either to the left or to the right. And if you're nervous at this point, you can always use your spacing gauge to come in here, excuse my hand, and check and see if everything's okay. Now I'm going to move up here. template up. Let's see, one, two, three. There we go. Turn. Check my line over here. I have to go a couple more stitches. And there we go. One might be off a little bit too, so when I get to the center, I'm going to check it, and nope, I'm good. I have found that that method of adjusting works for all the spin and echo templates. how this line got off from the original so this is going to be always off a little stop in the middle adjust it a little and go on this one I went a little too far so I'm going to go back. There we go. And it just takes a second to move that template. Coming up on the end of our so we have completed the web and we are now going to go down here and if I use my arc and my I could put the wave back on but this is going to work fine So, remember when I told you that um, the legs are also stitched? There's a couple of ways you can do this. You can cut in here 
and you can actually mark lines on your quilt sandwich. What I've done is I have printed this on very thin foundation paper. So I'm just going to rip the paper, put it like that, and there we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually stitch right on top of the paper. And that is going to allow me to, to get all of these like stitched where they need to be. And then I can just rip the paper off. So we're going to just move over here to one of the lines. And in order to get a really straight line, I'm actually going to use, let me see if we can come in here a little bit closer. I'm going to use my spacing gauge every time. So you might be able to see it better if I went over here. turn and if it's not absolutely perfect it's going to be fine you just want to get these legs stitched in as close to the direction and then we're going to come back and we are going to Once you're inside where you're inside the body, you can just move to the next leg. See, that one went way off the paper, and it's okay. The trick is to get back onto this stitching, which is hard to see because the paper's been split. Leonie always talks about once you have practice, you'll be able to gauge a quarter inch. Yeah, that doesn't happen for me. I almost always have to measure. I do know that when we are done, that you are going to be able to see the legs on the back of this. And for a wall hanging, that's fine. If you wanted to put this on a quilt, then just know that that's how it's going to be. And this time I have to go up to the stitches and not the line. Because I went. So now those are done. We're just going to move this way and come and do the other ones.
So now I'm done and I am going to pull the threads. I like to pull and bury my threads. I pretty much do that all the time. So. And now I can just tear this off. And it comes right out. Whatever doesn't come out you can actually just use a pair of tweezers and it helps if you take the pin out. It just perforates the paper and makes it pretty easy to come out. So I'm going to get rid of this paper. I'm going to change the foot on the machine and then we are going to stitch the spider down. So here's my little spider. And he's going to go right on top of the legs. Like that. Ta -da. So let me get the foot changed and I will show you how to attach the spider. Here is our spider web that we've stitched out and I buried the threads from before and I've just pinned the spider down in a couple of places. Doesn't need a lot. And now I'm going to stitch him on. So this is going to be raw. Um, it's going to fray a little bit, but you know, the spider, he'll be a little fuzzy after a few years of washing. But I don't wash my wall hangings very often. And I'm going to attach him down with a blanket stitch. You can use whatever stitch you like. So a blanket stitch, for those of you that don't know, let's see if I can do this left-handed. The stitch is going to go, and it's going to look like this. So it goes down, across, back, down, across, back. Okay? So the stitch length that I have selected is the length, and I'll write this down is 2.3 and the width is set at 2.6 so that's just a narrow enough stitch it's not going to show up very much you could do a wider stitch if you wanted to that would be fine I am going to use my stiletto um, you could use a seam ripper um, anything like that what you don't want to use is your finger and I'm just going to do that. I'm going to hold the fabric down while I'm stitching a little bit. Remember, we didn't fuse this. There's nothing on the back of this fabric. And so it's, that's why it's pinned. And that's why you're going to want to hold these ends down. So when I do applique, I have my foot set to hover. If your machine has that, that's great. If not, you can just lift the foot and rotate when you need to. So if you go slow enough, you're not going to have to do that very often. I'm using an open toe here so that I can actually see right in here. If you don't have an open toe, some feet have markings on them where the center is in the front. And you could use that. I've set my needle all the way over to the right because my machine has that feature. So that's how I'm going to do this. So 
I'm actually going to pull my threads. I do this whenever I do decorative stitching or applique because I just think it's cleaner. And we are going to stitch somewhat slowly. And if you can see, the fabric sometimes likes to pucker up. And I usually like to rotate when I'm in this outer position. If you rotate, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. So see that the needle has come in on that part of this stitch. So right now we're on this part. So the needle is going to go back that direction. If I move my fabric when it goes back, this stitch is going to go like this. So instead of going like this, you're going to get a stitch that goes like that. So just remember, rotate the fabric when the stitch is coming towards you. And I don't know if you can tell, but my fabric is starting to buckle up a little bit. So I really don't want to put... Let me get you a little bit closer where you can see this. Okay. The fabric here is starting to pucker up like this. So. And that's where this comes in. So if I hold this down. And now I'm kind of in an awkward position, so I want to turn this just a little bit. The one thing that you don't want to do is you don't want to hold your finger here. Okay? Don't ever do that. If you want to know why, you could email me. So now I'm running into my pin here. This is stitched down in the back here, so it's okay to take this pin out. I just needed to kind of hold it in place a little bit. I don't know if you can hear it, but I think there's a fly in my room. If you were doing this on a quilt, you could very easily applique the spider and stitch his legs down. And even the web if you wanted to before you did any of the quilting. I would like to quilt this, the web myself. The issue you're going to run into with background quilting is coming up to the applique. So that's a completely different technique. Because you definitely would not want these stitching lines to stitch across your spider. And I do this pretty slow. You can speed it up. This is a pretty small piece. So I 
I don't feel I have as, not, as much control when I go fast. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of people that do. But I find that this is picking up more. And so that's why on this one I'm going kind of slow. Another pin can come out. Now, I'm right here on the other side at the point in the neck. I'm going to rotate the fabric so that this stitch on this side goes in this way. I like that. That's how I always do my corners. I'm trying really hard to keep my hand out of your way. We are almost done. So again, I'm right in that crick here. So I'm turning it so the stitch goes in can turn it again and we're going to stitch when I get to the end I'm also going to bury my threads here's a trick if you pull this straight out you can see where you started so I know I'm past that I'm going to go up beyond one stitch Sometimes if you start and stop on the same place, in the same place, it's difficult to tell which are your starting threads and which are your ending threads. So I just make sure that I keep them separated. So here's threads, here's threads. And if I have to, if I'm not going to bury them right away, I'll just stick a pin over it and that'll keep those guys together. So when I go to bury, I know which ones are which. So let's move this out a little bit so you can see better. Or not, there we go. So here we have our finished web and our spider. 
And the only last thing to do before we put the binding on is to get rid of our reference lines. So they come out pretty easy. Little notes that I drew. It's the first time I've ever done that. I've never like wrote notes on a quilt before, but now I think that might not be a bad idea. If you remember, some of these lines here weren't perfect, but you know what? When I take out my reference lines, you can't tell. And now I'm thinking the next time I make a spider web, I may actually want to make a couple of these off on purpose to make it look, uh, so there we go, our spider web and our spider. It's a little too much gone. Okay. So here's the first one I did. And the only difference is this spider's climbing down and that spider's climbing up. So I hope you enjoy doing this. I really like Halloween projects. It doesn't take very long to do. And you could make a placemat for a kid or for yourself and I really look forward to seeing pictures of how you've made your spider webs and spiders and feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Again this is Pam Barner. Thank you so much for watching.